Hello friends, great to see you. Today we are going to be going on kind of a experience. <laughs> Today I'm going to be designing a like garden hood and I'm going to be bringing you along with me for the design experience because I really enjoy making tutorials. Um, I've always liked teaching and I've always liked teaching about things that I really liked. So knitting fits that bill very well. But even more than the actual like process and aspect of knitting, I love the designing part. It's my favorite part. I love it. And I just want to share, I just want to share it because it's really frustrating sometimes. Um, uh, but it pays off like really a lot because you get to create something completely new, completely from your brain. And like, yeah, it's definitely, there's an iteration of it out there somewhere, but this is something that I made and I don't know. I just, I really like that. I like the designing aspect of it. So I've got my coffee. Basically the timeline for this pattern is I had the idea, um, I went to Walmart and I bought grid paper because I don't know, it's easier for me to draw on pen and paper instead of on a computer um, because I get too like perfectionist when I'm on the computer. But if I'm like drawing pen and paper, especially grid paper, um, I'll just kind of like go with the flow and then I can fix it later. I don't know. I went with my sister, we got grid paper, um, and then on vacation, I kind of started doodling this motif, this um, garden leaf vine style motif. And I'm like, this would be a cute like hood. Um, so I designed it. I had the idea when I was on vacation, came back from vacation. I had knit a little bit of it, said, eh, I think I'm gonna do this on my knitting machine instead of by hand. Completely ripped it back, started working on my knitting machine, got like a couple hours in, and I'm like, mm, I can't really see it. Um, I initially designed it to be two colors, a white and a lilac, and honestly, I think it's a lovely color combination. I'm going to continue like advocating for that color combo. I love it. Um, the issue is, the colors that I have are very close to each other. So the lilac is really, really pale. So you can't really see what happens. Like you can't see the motif very well. And it's a lot of work to do color work. I struggle with it. Um, and so I was like, if I'm gonna do color work and if I'm gonna do like a whole thing that's just color work, I'm going to make the colors at least pop and like have contrast. New location, yarn storage. These are the colors that we are going with. And I feel like, you know, green matches the garden vibe and I'm kind of a, I tend to wear darker colors. So I was like, dark gray. This is not as dark as I was hoping it would be. So I'm a little sad about that. I wish that I had gotten like mohair as like black, but they were all out of black. And I kind of wish that this was like, this color was emerald and this was just what it was because I, I really like this like sage color but I wish there was more contrast because I feel like that makes mohair look really cute. I'm not going to go through the hassle of returning all that, waiting for it to come back in. I'm just going to start because this is cute. It will work fine. Um, if you want to like follow this tutorial slash the pattern that I make from this, feel free to get, you know, different colors or like contrasting. I would recommend contrast because it's cute. So I had done a gauge swatch last night with my gray. And after doing it, I realized my calculations were off. They were totally fine with stitch, but the number of rows I needed was significantly less. I needed to add 12 rows, which kind of really messed up my pattern. Um, so I took a bunch of time this morning adjusting my pattern from what it was to what it is now. And it's okay. I think it's kind of that thing where I I loved the first pattern and so nothing I do for the second is going to fix it. Um, alternatively, I could have like added an extra panel essentially for the head section right here, but that will give the shape more rounded and less of a kind of like point and then like a fall and a floop kind of here. Um, and so I was like, you know what, whatever, it's chill. I will just figure out how to extend this pattern and how to adjust it and we are probably gonna start knitting soon. I was debating like the way I wanted to construct this piece. So it's literally just gonna be two panels of the color grid and then there's gonna be ribbing around the bottom. 
Um, I want to decrease for the ribbing because I've made one other hood before and I didn't decrease for the ribbing. I went down two needle sizes. Granted, I was doing this by hand instead of on the machine. And I did one by one ribbing and the, the ribbing was just not like cinching. Like it was just flat and I blocked it. I did all, everything that I could and the ribbing was just like blip. So I'm gonna <laughs> decrease stitches so that I can kind of get a cute like cinching effect with the ribbing. Um, obviously, so I want it to fit over my head, you know, that will be fine. We'll figure that out. Um, but that means I can't start with the ribbing because it will look very weird and we'll end up having like gaps at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with one of the panels and then decrease and like continue with the ribbing. So that's what we're doing. Um, because it's two panels and they are connected along two different axes, they're connected on the back they're connected on the top. Um, I could technically do create this pattern in two ways. I could essentially make one long rectangle that's horizontally long and copy the pattern like, like a printer kind of. Um, or I could do one long rectangle that's vertically long and it would essentially be the seam connecting them would be the top seam right here. And then you just have to like seam the back and do the ribbing. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. My fear with doing it the long way is that once I seam up the back, it will be hard to get the stitches back on the needles because they'll kind of already be seamed in two directions. So I'll have to kind of stretch. I don't want to warp it. Um, so I don't know. I could do it the long ways, but I just have a feeling that that will turn out kind of garbage. I don't know why I have a feeling like it will. It could totally be fine. Um, and it even might, it might even be faster for me because of just the way that I do color work. I'm quite slow. So if I just kind of go print it all in one bit instead of like one rectangle, one rectangle, maybe it will turn out fine. I'm going to cast on really soon probably because I'm itching to like get this done. I think once, I make it once, I think it could be really quick, like a very lovely weekend knit project, you know? And for somebody who's a hand knitter, definitely weekend knit project. I've found that I'm faster hand knitting to a certain degree with color work. I don't know why, because hand knitting by all accounts should be slower than machine knitting. Maybe it's just that I'm like so slow. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I don't know. Oh, also something I didn't mention, this will absolutely shock you. As someone who's knit for years, I have never worked with mohair before. <gasps> I know, I know. Throw me in, in knitting prison <laughs> because I have never knit with mohair before and I don't know why, it's so cute. I see it all over. I think it adds a lovely like fuzziness and a softness to many knits, although that's the key, right? It's a visual softness. It's not an actual softness. I find mohair, I just have a feeling that it's going to be like a sensory hell um, for me. <laughs> I'm sure some other people like it, but I don't know. I have a hard time with like, with itchiness and with wool. And, and that's really ironic considering my hobby is knitting. I think these will look cute together. The question is, Will I be able to handle the sensation of it touching my face? We will find out. I will see you guys soon. I will see you once I start knitting and I will let you know how it's going. I am at my knitting machine right now. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I just got back from a fun time with my mom. We went, we got boba and then we went shopping. So that was fun. Uh, she bought me a lovely pajama set, so very comfy. Okay, so what I've decided to do for the knitting is I'm going to knit the two panels right next to each other. So it's going to be one horizontal, very long knit. And that way, when I get to the end of it, I can just decrease and then knit all the ribbing at once. And then it just needs to be seamed up at the front. So hopefully we can make a very pretty clean seam. That's my biggest worry is that it's like not clean, but there's not much we can do about that. And I'm pretty decent at seaming ribbing at this point. so. I think everything will be okay. I 
messed up somewhere on this row and I cannot figure out where and let me just tell you this is the first row <laughs> like this is not the very first row of the knit but it's the first row with any like difficult color difficult color work where it's like non-patterned color work <sighs> and I, I it looks right and I don't see where I messed up It's like, I feel like I must have cast on an extra stitch or something, but I didn't. I cast on 58, 58. Where is this extra stitch coming from? Okay, so I'm just not realizing I made the same mistake on the left side, or the right side. So, at least there's symmetry. I fucked up somewhere. But I fucked up twice somewhere on the same pattern, so we will figure this out. So I figured out my mistake, and it was that first thing that I told you. Uh, it was supposed to be 57 stitches <laughs> on both sides, so I effectively have two extra stitches. Um, and what should I probably do? Start over. What will I be doing? Decreasing one <laughs> on both sides. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to start over this row, don't get me wrong, because I haven't actually knit anything this row, thankfully. Um, I'm going to put all the needles back into work, and I'm essentially going to decrease one on both sides, and just pretend that everything is fine, because it will still look okay. This will help, you know, it's p all part of the plan. This will help give it that, like, tapered effect. No, but I'm just not, I'm not redoing it. Mohair is is tricky it's like it, mohair does not want to be reworked and i was realizing as i started this that i am going to have to be tedious when it comes to rotating the yarn on the floor i keep my yarn on the floor when i do color work i don't know how other knitters do um but let me show you so yeah i keep my yarn on the floor so that i can move it around and it won't get tangled up if it's up on the thing it kind of gets in the way of the carriage so i literally keep it on the floor and Normally when I work color work, I will just kind of let everything get super tangled up on the floor and then when I just can't untangle it anymore, hopefully I'm done with the piece um, because I don't really do a lot of color work and when I do it tends to be short bursts. Um, sometimes I'll untangle it as I go occasionally, but with mohair, nah. I'm going to be constantly making sure it's not tangled because it will be very annoying to try to untangle it. Fixed it. Okay, I think I'm going to be done for today. I've literally only done six rows, but I am getting a migraine and my phone's about to die, so fortuitous circumstances are making me have to stop filming for today. <laughs> so I'm going to see you guys next time. Hello! So, since the last update, I've knit a few rows, um, and I'm really liking how it's turning out. I'm just going to keep going as it is. I debated removing the little, like, leaf um, center lines that indicate on the big leaves, um, but I'm going to keep them on there. I don't know. I'm kind of iffy about those still, but I think that they just kind of look like blobs without the, like, vein kind of pattern. So, we'll see how that turns out. I've definitely made a couple small mistakes, but honestly, not as many mistakes as I normally make, so I'm, I'm very happy with how it's going. So I have a good amount of time today to work on my knitting, so I think my goal is to get at least halfway through, which I believe is just like 20 more rows, so I think it's going to go good. I've also decided to do kind of a like time-lapse thing of just showing you what the panel looks like after every row. Um, and we'll see how it's going. I'm a little nervous about the edge of the panel. It, it looks a little messy, but I haven't been able to actually see the right side. I only can see the wrong side. And it's kind of cool with this dual, dual toned uh, color work knitting piece because it looks the opposite on the other side. So I can see how it's turning out, but opposite. So 
yes, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going good. We're just going to keep trucking. It is now 3.30 and I am three quarters of the way done. I've done 61 rows out of the 80 um, of the main panel. That doesn't include the ribbing. Um, I really want to keep going. I really want to finish the main panel. I've already done double what I planned to do for the day though. And I can tell, I think if I keep working, I'm going to have a flare up tomorrow. So, uh, I don't know. It, sometimes it's just so unfulfilling to stop when you're three quarters of the way through. Like, I'm so close to like having a stopping point that feels like a nice little check mark. Like, you are creative today. You were like creatively fulfilled today. So it's, it's really frustrating because I want to keep working. I'm really liking how it's turning out. I think it's going to be really cute. I'm starting to get worried that it's going to be too small. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should have done a looser tension, like a 5.5 or something. Part of the reason I went with the tighter tension is so that the floats will, like it will loosen up because the floats will loosen once it's off of the needles. Um, and like if you have it too loose, then you'll have like really long, like sagging floats essentially. Um, so hopefully it loosens up with the blocking and with the like floats that will give it a little bit of extra wiggle room um because because if it's too small i'm kind of just screwed i guess the only way i could really fix it if it's too long this direction is i could add like a longer ribbing here um if it's too short height wise i can add just like extra rows i guess as long as i don't like cast it off together before trying it on so that's my concern. My main one is I'm worried about the tension. I'm worried it's too tight and that the project's gonna be too small. But if we're three quarters of the way through, it's like, I'm not gonna change it now. <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is one more week later. So it is now Saturday again. I had a very busy week, so I haven't really been working on my knitting that much, but now I got the whole weekend. So I believe I'm on row 65. So I only have like 15 more to go and then I can start the ribbing. Um, my concerns that I talked about last time still stand. I'm still worried that the tension's too tight. I think that the hood might end up being too small. So what I'm gonna do, I'm either going to finish the ribbing, do the whole ribbing, all of that, or out of curiosity, I might cast off with waist yarn and test to see how big it is and see if like I feel like I need to add any extra rows before I do the ribbing. We might do that because I can like create like a little motif or something around the bottom if it's too small. I'm really worried it's going to be like child size. So we are going to at least finish the color work today and then I will update you from there. Okay, so it pretty much measured out to the exact measurements that I wanted. So my fears have been somewhat assuaged. And if, if it's too small, then that's just because I took bad measurements. So that will be fully on me if it ends up being too small. So I'm so happy with how it's looking. Like it was probably the most satisfying like pull off the machine that I've ever done. It was it was just so nice. It's also curling a lot, which makes me think it's going to uh, block really nice. I'm not going to block it right now just because it's matching the dimensions that I wanted it to be, so I don't think I need to block it. I'm going to go ahead and just put it back on the needles and then knit the collar, and we'll see what it's looking like from there. So there's only a couple places with some very clear errors. It's It's literally right at the beginning where I was like getting used to this pattern. Let me see, which section is it on? Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see without it rolling, but 
you can see the snail is really messed up. Like, I accidentally like knitted his head on the wrong side on one way and then the right side on the other section of the pattern. So that's the only part I'll think I'll need to do some like um, duplicate stitch to fix, but otherwise it's looking really good. So that's exciting. I'm going to start working on the ribbing now. Oh, and here is what it looks like. Just a brief um, pretend that it's actually a hood. Oh my god, so many strings. This is a horrible demonstration. <laughs> use your- you have to use your imagination. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know if you can see it how I see it, like, in your mind's eye, but it's getting there, it's getting there. It's gonna be a lot of ends to weave in, but not too many. And this side is pretty cool too, honestly. Alright, time to do the ribbing. I forgot to do one of the steps <laughs> because I was so excited to just finish the color work. I forgot to decrease. So what we're doing is I'm going to pick up two stitches and then the third stitch I'm going to basically make a decrease stitch and put it onto the same needle as the second one. So we're going to decrease every third stitch here and hopefully that gives us the kind of cinched look that we're looking for without making it too small. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So when you decrease every third stitch, you end up with 76. I skipped one so that it's 77 stitches, and that way we can have a two by one ribbing. The culprit. Whoa, it's like a perfect sine wave needs to be down a little more. Isn't that crazy? So now we're seeing why I cast on with waste yarn instead of an e-wrap cast on because now that this part is done and the ribbing is done, I want to put this back on the machine backwards so that it's right side facing. And then this second half, I'm going to put on on the same needles, wrong side facing, and then I'm going to cast off. And that will give it like a really nice cast off that stays on the inside. If it had been the other way around, like if this panel had been wrong side facing and I put the right side facing on it, then there would be like a very visible seam on the outside. So I'm just gonna put this on and then cast off in the same way we cast off our ribbing, as you can see right here. 
going to do the exact same thing. See? Look at that. Obviously there's a bit of fluff there, but it's a very nice right angle that this bind off creates. So now I'm going to be adding the ribbing to the front outer face framing area. The only bummer is that I can't really fit all of the stitches onto the needles because the ribbing here is would be too taut. Like I can't I can't get all the stitches on. So I'm going to do um, I think that this is 50. So I'm gonna ha I have 53 stitches on the left side, and then I'm gonna do three 53 on the right side. I'm going to knit both and then fold them over both times, and then I'm just going to seam up the middle part and make it look as seamless as possible uh, with using an invisible stitch. So hopefully that, that works and it looks good still, because I do want it to be a folded rib like this. But I think I'm only gonna knit eight to ten rows instead of here where it was 24 because I want a very like just a cute uh, outer edge Okay, uh, it's finished, mostly. Um, here it is. Very cute. Honestly, I like everything about it, except uh, this is what it looks like right now when I put it on. <laughs> it, it is, um, yeah, like, like, this looks kind of cute, but then you kind of... It's solid, dude. Like, it, it just stands straight up all on its own. Like, I can... <laughs> oh my god, okay. I'm really hoping that blocking will fix that. I think it will. I think it's just the nature of the, the like, tension <laughs> means that it hasn't released yet. Like, the, the fibers haven't relaxed since I've knit it, so... Uh, fingers crossed that gets fixed when I block it. Otherwise, it's looking really cool. I like the design. I like the ribbing. I like the like accent ribbing around the face section here. So yeah, I'm going to throw this in our sink, let it sit for a while with some wool wash, and uh, let it block overnight. And then until, you know, it dries. And once it's dried, I'll show you guys the final result. Fingers crossed that it's not super whack and stiff like it is right now. Okay, are you guys ready for the final results? Drum roll, please. Here it is. It looks the same as in the last second, like the last clip that I showed you, but it's blocked now. And it actually makes a huge difference. Like, you can see it without me even trying it on, but like, look at that movement. I'm, I'm in love. Like, I think it might be one of my favorite things I've ever made. It just looks like professional and clean and tidy and it has a nice stretch. I just love it. Okay, I'll try it on for you guys. Ta-da! It like sits better. It moves better. I love it. I think that this little bump right here is actually because in that last scene when I stretched it out to show you guys, it will just sit however. And also because I wear glasses, so when I put it on, it can't, it has to do that to fit around my glasses. So I think that's just a me problem. I don't think that's a pattern problem. 
Something that I would change if I redid this is I would find a way to not have to seam this up in the middle because it does create a little extra bit of stability there when I don't necessarily want there to be stability there. I love it though. Let me, let me give you another look. Uh, I just think it's super cute and I love it for so many reasons. One of which is I'm not a huge beanie person. I like the ability to just flip this up and it's not on my face anymore and I don't have to like worry about losing it. Like with a beanie, you have to put it somewhere. With this, it's just on me. I will say my note about the mohair thing was correct. If I <laughs> ever make one of these for myself, probably without the mohair. I think it will turn out just as lovely, but it is a, a bit itchy. But the mohair does give it kind of a fluffy, like full look. Final thoughts about the pattern. I am like minorly hood obsessed now because it's a quick knit. Like obviously this took me a while because of the color work, which as I've been doing more research and like hearing about other people who use knitting machines, it actually is pretty common for color work to take a while on the manual machines because it's manual and it's not that like intuitive. If you don't have like a color changer or anything like that, like the Brother KX350 is pretty much as manual as you can get for a knitting machine. So yeah, that, it kind of makes sense why it's taken me so long and it makes me want to buy a fancy knitting machine like really bad. And you know what? I've been doing this for a while. Like I feel like I could justify that purchase, but part of me wants to like use it as like a prize for continuing working hard on this channel. Like maybe it will be like a 1000 subscriber like perk for myself, a little bonus of like, good job girl, you did it. You stayed like consistent. <laughs> That was not at all related to the hood, <laughs> but let me know what you guys think. Would you wear this? Would you make it? If you want to make it, go ahead and check out my pattern on Etsy. It should be on there soon if it's not already. And I am in love with this. I'm so happy. I'm super glad I started over for the contrast because look at that. You don't want all your hard color work to be for waste. I also like, I really like this like line line and then like separated by the main gray and then the main like accent color. I just, I like it. I'm all about those tiny details that make a pattern or a piece like come together really cute. Something I did consider for this pattern and a modification you can make if you want to make a modification is you see here at the bottom where we seamed this together, you could leave that open. You could leave that open and you could thread like some yarn or some string or something through this to create a bit of a like hoodie kind of tie thing. Difficulty with that is it will be harder to thread it through the seam you make up here. That's not closed. Like there's no, there is still a, a gap right in between there. So you could do it. It will just be harder because it's like thicker in that zone but I did it with my other hood. Let me show you real quick. Here is the other hood I made. It is the first hood I've ever made and it is from my like color block hood video. You could find it there if you wanna see how I made this. This one was hand knit um, and it's quite a bit looser than the other one. The tension's a lot looser and it's huge in comparison. Like, I don't know. I like them both for different reasons. This one, I did do that hoodie string thing I was telling you about. And it also does not have that seam. And it has this kind of like seaming thing here. So there are aspects of this that I like better than this one. For example, I like the looseness a bit better. So I think maybe if I made this again, I don't know. This one's inherently always going to be chunkier because it's too essentially two yarn like length thickness and this is just a single yarn thickness because there's no like overlap if that makes sense like the floats cause this to be a lot thicker and sturdier so i guess if i like reduce the tension on this one it could be more like loose and flowy but 
I don't necessarily know if we want that because then it's going to kind of have pockets where the floats pull away from their neighbor yarn. So I think I'd just leave the tension as it is and just expect it to be a little chunkier. Um, we could also just make this bigger in general and that would help it fall more. But I do like how the ribbing turned out a lot more on this. I feel like this just looks more professional altogether. Not that everything we have to do is, has to be professional, but I like it when the things that I make turn into like something I'd actually wear. I would actually wear this if it was ever cold outside. <laughs> this is like, I think my favorite video I've ever made, maybe. So thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey and I hope you had a good time. I felt like my personality shined through more on this one. I'm learning what it's like to be in front of a camera. I'm learning how to be myself without being like stilted and weird. So thank you so much for joining me and I'm just going to keep making more videos. They're gonna keep getting better. So please go ahead and like follow me along for this journey if you'd like and press that subscribe button. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.